Today, I'm going to recap a 2013 Korean drama comedy movie, called Miracle in Cell No. 7. This movie is based on the real-life story of a mentally disabled man who was tortured and pleaded guilty under duress to the sexual assault and murder of a nine-year-old girl in 1972 in Chuncheon City. So, what did he do to deserve such a predicament? Was he freed in the end? Let's find it out. At the start of the movie, we are introduced to Ye Sung, a full-fledged lawyer who tries to defend her father's name. Her father was falsely accused of sexual assault and murder of a girl. She claims that the prosecutor makes false claims since she is a witness to the whole incident. To convince the judge, she tells the courtroom about her past. Six-year-old Ye Sung and her mentally disabled father, Lee, visit a shop to buy a Sailor Moon backpack which they have looked for for weeks. However, a police commissioner purchases it first and leaves nothing for them. Due to his mental illness, the commissioner misunderstands him and beats him. Ye Sung is a kind and smart girl. Despite her disappointment of not getting the bag, she doesn't ask about it anymore from her father. During his job, the commissioner's kid reaches out to Lee to tell him about a store where he can get the same backpack. Lee follows her but she gets into an accident. He tries to save her but is misunderstood by a witness who reports him of sexually assaulting and killing the girl. Even in the police station, he is still concerned about Ye Sung who is alone at home. He tries to leave but is beaten by the police and kept until the next day. In the morning, the police make false comments on his actions, noting that he tries to get revenge on the commissioner by assaulting his girl. To add to his predicament, he is forced to make a false reenactment in exchange for meeting his daughter, which is also a lie told by the police. Lee is immediately rushed to a prison and the warden beats him because of his unreal crime. He is detained in cell number 7 along with 5 other inmates. After reading the crime report, the inmates beat him but stop upon knowing that he is sentenced to death. During working hours, the inmates are tasked to make soccer balls and use it as an alibi to smuggle things with the initiative of the gang leader. By distributing the smuggled things, the leader and his gang establish their turf within the prison. This invites dislike from another gang leader. The other gang leader tries to stab the leader but is saved by Lee. The indebted leader asks Lee to make a wish and he will grant it. So Lee asks for his daughter Ye Sung. When a church event is held, Ye Sung is kidnapped by the inmates and smuggled into the prison to meet Lee. Lee is overjoyed to meet his daughter and hugs her tightly. He says sorry for leaving her and explains that he is being detained. However, their reunion is cut short because the church event is disbanded. The inmates try to smuggle her out but the church's bus already left, so Ye Sung lives in the cell with them. Upon living with them, the inmates realize that Lee is not an assailant since he loves her daughter so much. Two days have passed, and the cell room looks more like Ye Sung's playground rather than a prison cell. The inmates get along with Ye Sung and warm up to her due to her brightness. The inmates try to smuggle her out once more on a religious holiday, to avoid punishment. However, they mistook the day and find Buddhist monks instead. In one night, the warden realizes that a girl is smuggled into the prison. He commands the guards to look for her. The inmates try to hide her once more but are caught by the warden. Ye Sung is sent back to the orphanage and Lee is confined in a solitary cell. That night, a fire breaks out from an attempted arson. A prisoner sets his cell on fire and the warden tries to save him. However, the fire gets bigger and the warden is trapped instead. Lee tries to save him but gets injured during the process. When he wakes up, he realizes that Lee has saved him and suspects that his crime report is fabricated. Meanwhile, Ye Sung comes back to her school to attend the classes. Her teacher asks about her problem and Ye Sung recommends a parent consultation instead, so that she can meet her father. In the prison, Lee is finally united with her daughter once more. Upon realizing that the girl just misses her father so much, she doesn't bother them and lets them talk wholeheartedly. They enjoy their conversation very much but the visit time's up. The warden sees Lee's love towards his daughter for the first time and is more convinced about his suspicion. He recollects his memories about his only son who was killed by an inmate. After their separation, Ye Sung grieves so much that she doesn't want to eat. Seeing this, the warden cares for her and adopts her. He also tries to prove Lee's innocence. He looks into his crime files and finds that his sworn statement is falsified. The police was also forced to wrap the case up in a week which might lead to them exploiting Lee's mental disability. Seeing the injustice that Lee is facing, the warden picks Ye Sung up and smuggles her into the prison. The inmates spend their time together with Ye Sung once more. In the cell, 
Ye Sung teaches the leader how to read and write. She also brings a cell phone with her so that an inmate can call his wife and his newborn baby. One by one, the inmates have a special bond with her as they help one another. During an exercise, Lee is informed that his final trial is set. The inmates are determined to train him so that he can win the trial and be unified with her daughter once more. The inmates start by trying to find out what happened. Since Lee wasn't really aware of what happened, they have to go through several scenarios in order to get the picture of the incident. They found out that it was winter and the girl slipped on a frozen puddle. While she was falling, the girl grabbed a plastic wrap making a brick fall onto her head and killed her. Seeing the girl unconscious, Lee tried to perform CPR to save her. But the commissioner forces the police to report it as assault and murder despite Lee's denial. Knowing the mystery, the inmates are more convinced to help him win. They train him to answer trick questions skillfully without hiding the truth. Even though it is hard due to Lee's illness, they are still confident that Lee will win because he has been mistreated. Lee studies day and night, in every situation, to make sure he can live with Ye Sung once more. The inmates also organize a petition from the other prisoners to help Lee in his trial. Meanwhile, the warden meets the commissioner to convince him of Lee's innocence. He also asks the commissioner to reinvestigate the case. However, he has to obey his superior and agrees with the verdict instead. When Lee is training, a public lawyer comes to meet him. The lawyer says that he must plead guilty to save Ye Sung, because the commissioner wants him executed. He threatens him that the commissioner will hurt Ye Sung instead if he wins the trial. The lawyer also abandons the prisoner's petition saying that it won't help. After a while, Lee and the warden depart for the courtroom. In the waiting room, the commissioner threatens him to accept his punishment, or he will hurt his daughter instead. Under duress, Lee finally breaks and pleads guilty to the accusations, to save his daughter. The warden tries to convince the judge that Lee is mentally intimidated, but he is still sentenced to death. In the prison, the inmates are still determined to save Lee and Ye Sung. So they devise a plan by utilizing the upcoming Christmas event. They plan to make a hot air balloon to let them escape. They work around the clock because Lee's execution is near. They believe that the most innocent man in the prison is Lee and he needs to be freed of the injustice. They also request all of the other prisoners and Ye Sung's teachers help in order to commence the plan. When the event arrives, Ye Sung takes her father's hand and invites him to the yard. All the other prisoners are also invited by the kids to convince the guards that the event is still ongoing. In the yard, a hot air balloon is ready to take Lee and Ye Sung out. As they fly away, the guards become aware of the attempt but are hindered by the prisoners and the school teachers. However, a rope is stuck on a barbed wire and their attempt fails. They use this moment to savor the setting sun together, for the last time. In the cell, the inmates celebrate Ye Sung's birthday together. Each of them give her a gift. Lee gives her the Sailor Moon backpack that she has been asking for. Overjoyed with the present, Ye Sung thanks Lee for being her father. However, their joy is cut short since Lee's execution is nearing. Before going, they thank the inmates for their care and efforts. The inmates are saddened to let Lee go but must hold their tears. They hide Lee's execution from Ye Sung under the pretense of moving to another facility. As Lee walks past the hall, the other prisoners also feel sad for him. As they are about to separate, Lee tries to hold his tears in. He hugs her daughter for the last time and walks to his execution. Ye Sung waits for her father's final goodbye, but Lee doesn't show up because he is devastated by their goodbye. After hearing her daughter calling him, he comes back to hug her wholeheartedly. He asks for help because he doesn't want to be separated from his daughter. Over and over, he says sorry and asks for help from anyone, but the prisoners and the guards cannot do anything for them. Seeing his father crying, Ye Sung also cries and asks him to stay, saying that she will visit him every day. After the event, Lee is still executed for the false accusations. Ye Sung studies hard to be a lawyer and appeals for the case. With the inmates' testimony and the public support, Lee is found innocent and his name is cleared. In the end, Ye Sung sees her as a child and her father, flying away on the balloon as if he is off to a better place in heaven.